Hello, everybody. For those of you who are watching this back, this is a really good occasion. I've been looking forward to this. We've been looking forward to this. We're sitting down to discuss what has been working in Italy. And if you don't know, things have been working really well in Italy within the AV network. And there's quite a story that comes along with Italy's history within AV. And Sylvia deserves a spotlight. And Andrea is here for two reasons. One, to help with translation. But two, because Andrea is responsible for bringing Sylvia onto the team. Take a moment to appreciate these two people right here, Andrea and Sylvia. You know, these, these two are, are also doing different parts um, within AV. They're not just in Italy running cubes as organizers. They're also helping out with the inductions team in a big way. They're also, you know, Sylvia is the regional organizer for Italy as well as Malta and has now just picked up Georgia. So is managing three countries. Um, you know, so these are powerhouse activists that we have here. And this meeting that we're recording for everybody to watch back is for the purpose of delving into the story a bit more for the sake of inspiration for you guys. And we're also going to talk about what has worked and what they've learned throughout this process. And these are the things that I've observed them learning. And I've learned and relearned a lot of these things as a result of observing these, you know, these two and the, the challenges and the way things have unfolded in Italy. And, you know, it's interesting because, you know, there were some videos made about AV during the time when we had a regional organizer who was representing Italy. This regional organizer came to one damn day, actually. And this activist was really passionate, really dedicated, spent a bunch of time of that 24 hours. I'm pretty sure she was there for the whole thing. And I just thought, wow, she's really committed. She became the regional organizer for Italy. And then what she did is, after being the regional organizer for some time and creating a bond with a lot of these organizers and activists in Italy, she then translated our internal documents, our human resources documents, to say that we are an intersectional organization. And this created a whole... Dis I mean, it was divisive to say the least what happened after that because a lot of people found out that we are not intersectional and they thought they signed up, you know, because she was handling the inductions for all of these organizers. So sh they thought they had signed up to be a part of an intersectional organization and they started to protest within the organization. And then this created this huge drama where the regional organizer said they wanted to leave and with that regional organizer a lot of chapters also left a lot of organizers left and and i'm not sure what they're all doing now but at the time they said they were going to do something and um there was lots of videos made about this you know oh italy there's an exodus in italy all these activists have disbanded from av but no one talks about what's happened since then, you know, in these videos that have been made about us to get views and such, right? No one's really reporting on the news of what is really happening in Italy. Since the subject has been brought to the public eye, this video is only for the organizers within AV, but you guys get the real knowledge on what's going on in Italy. Let's talk about the positive. Let's talk about what has happened since that exodus in Italy. And, um, Sylvia and Andrea have picked up the responsibility since that happened. Um, there were much less chapters that actually left during that exodus than were reported in videos and, and social media posts about that situation. But there was still a significant amount that left. But what has happened since then? And I'll, I'll tell you a summary of what I've seen happening. And then I would like Sylvia to chime in and Andrea to chime in and to speak more about their story. <clears throat> but we're here to talk about 
the things that have worked and the things that they've learned and i've learned also i'm sharing my experience with this experience also um is for you guys to take a piece away from this that helps you with your mindset and your attitude and your determined work that you're doing within av for the animals that's the purpose of this video because you know i was recently in taiwan and you know that experience in and of itself taught me so much and those activists were phenomenal to work with so i want and i've noticed that there's a lot that organizers need in terms of training and i don't mean physical training necessarily like yes it would be better for myself or a style someone super experienced within AV to be there and to work with you personally, to run cubes with you. But hopefully this video can help with a lot of the stuff that we hope for you to take away and to learn when we do actually come to your cities, because that's the purpose. If we, sh if we are in your city, we're there to upgrade exactly how you operate as a street activist, the way you think, the way you operate, from top to bottom and so i'm gonna you know try to achieve that through this video for you guys and i want you guys to really um take a moment to listen to this video when you have time if you're busy while you're listening to this perhaps give it another listen listen to it as many times as you need to really absorb this knowledge because i've been looking forward to doing this video for quite some time and i know that a lot of this information is extremely important for you guys to digest and implement asap what happened after that exodus was Sylvia then became the regional organizer for Italy. And so let's talk about exactly what challenges were present at that time. Sylvia had to deal with a lot of the drama, right? A lot of people complaining, a lot of people confused, a lot of people talking shit about each other. You know, there was a lot of drama going on. So Sylvia had to say, look, AV has always been clear about the fact that AV is not an intersectional organization. They are focused on animal rights 100%. That's what the organization is dedicated to. So she had to keep representing our true values to these people. She had to be like a beacon of light, like a lighthouse for these people. And they, the ones that were interested in being a part of an organization that is 100% dedicated to animals and their rights, they signed up they stayed on the ones that were present at that time as organizers stayed on and new organizers started to come on board and they signed up to exactly what we are about right and so sylvia was able to not get down in the dumps with all of the negativity she was able to not absorb the negativity from all these people and their toxic energy and trying to call us racist and sexist and homophobes and you know the common labels that people will place on you if you disagree with them or if you are just dedicated to the animals you know it's funny how much hate we get just for being dedicated to the animals which shows how oppressed animals are actually you know when the, the people who are dedicating themselves to it get the most hate from people internally within their own movement it's it, it's totally insane it's totally fucking insane. But Sylvia was able to navigate through this terrain and say, you know what? This organization and their values matter. And this is important. This is truly important. So, you know, I have a great deal of respect for these two people here because it is very important that the animals have a dedicated organization, at least one organization, come on, that's dedicated totally to their rights. And, um, after some time and it didn't take much time did it sylvia you know after some time you started to then form this new team in italy you started to then manage a new team of dedicated animal rights activists who were of a better quality than the previous ones because they were actually ready to show up to these cubes and take everything that they were doing seriously from the briefings to the debriefings and even the social gathering after it they took all of these things seriously and then what this then did is it attract this is from my observation this is what happened i want to then get sylvia to chime in soon but what happened is 
people then started to get drawn to this movement that was taking place in Italy of activists who were taking it seriously and enjoying themselves throughout the process because they're getting fulfillment out of doing this work because it's working. And now we stand presently, right? In Italy, we have 70 chapters. Is that right? Uh, 78, I think, now. 78. And, and we have one in Malta, right? Uh, yeah. E sta per essere aperto un altro capitolo ora che poco Cuneo e credo che con Cuneo arriveremo a 68. Giusto Andrea? So we are going to have um, open a new chapter in Cuneo which is a city close to Torino and we are going to be 68 chapters. 68. Did you say 78 just now? Or did, did I hear something? Did I hear that incorrectly? She said uh, 78 before, yes, it's 68. But it's 68. Okay, and then how many in Malta? So one, in Italia, one chapter in Malta and one chapter in Georgia. Okay, so that makes 70. That's why I had that number 70 in my head, I guess. Um, so Sylvia manages 70 chapters now. But just for context sake, if we look at when this exodus happened, do you guys remember how many chapters there were in Italy at that time? Quanti erano i capitoli prima della scissione? Erano mh, una settantina, compresa Malta, quindi siamo arrivati allo stesso numero praticamente di prima della scissione e in un periodo davvero difficile in cui credo che nessuno abbia implementato la, eh, il numero ecco, dell'attività. So, before that all happened, uh, we were about 70 chapters, so about the same as now. And uh, I think more than half left, but then with re reinduction, Within uh, three years, we have been able to build up again to the same number. Yeah. So this is why this is why I think this video is important, right? Because I'll, I'll also add this, and I think that you will both agree that it's not just about the number, it's about the quality. I mentioned that earlier. So now we have 70 chapters currently active, but, you know, I rest assured knowing that these chapters are all actually on the same page. They're actually signed up to the true values and the true things that we represent as an organization. So this is the difference, right? This is a massive difference because who knows what people are talking about while they're doing outreach at a Cuba Truth in a chapter that doesn't even really subscribe to what we subscribe to as an organization, as a global entity, you know? Uh, and so this is phenomenal news for everybody to take inspiration from. Currently, we stand with just as many chapters in Italy as there was during this exodus, during this intersectional attack on the animal rights movement. And I don't mean to, I'm not even trying to start any kind of war by saying this. I don't care for any of these battles anymore. Let's just focus on our work. But that's what it is. We, we, know, we know how to identify it because we've seen the greatest in our movement being, being affected by it. We know that it's an issue, right? So I'm just calling it what it is. But here we stand. Let's be positive. Let's just focus on the positive right now. Here we stand with just as many chapters, numbers-wise. We're unaffected by what happened back then. But are we stronger or weaker now? Much stronger. That's the answer to that question. Each chapter that we have in Italy right now, I'm confident, represents the true values of this organization, is out on the streets taking the work seriously. They are representing the animals and the reality of the victims correctly and focused on being effective, using their time wisely, building community based on the proper principles that this movement should be based on. And that is vastly different from many regions, you could say, you know, vastly different from many places around the world not just within av but obviously just within the animal rights movement at large 
you know, as a matter of observation, I think that this is very rare what's happening in Italy. If you're an animal rights activist in Italy right now, I'd imagine that the street activism movement has a buzz, is popping right now. People would know that getting active on the streets in Italy, if you're in Italy currently, is a thing that's happening. And that's, that's really cool. So I want to shine a light on this. You know, the culture in Italy around animal rights activism is currently energetic. It's currently, you know, electric, I would say. On the streets, people are getting out there and they're doing the work in, in the biggest cities and the smaller cities. And so, you know, would you agree that the quality of the activists that you currently manage, Sylvia, are of a really high caliber in terms of their professionalism? Sì, la cosa bellissima che è accaduta dopo, come reazione a questa, a questa scissione molto, molto brutta, vissuta come un grosso tradimento, eh, è stata che eh, con il tempo ricreandosi ha, ha lasciato ad AV i, i migliori attivisti, i migliori organizzatori che hanno fatto così creato dei gruppi di attivisti molto preparati e quindi ad oggi posso dire che i capitoli italiani eh, hanno alla loro guida degli organizzatori davvero preparati, davvero focalizzati sulle linee guida di Anonymous e Malta era già un capitolo fantastico prima e sta continuando ad esserlo e adesso è con noi anche il capitolo di eh, Tbilisi in, in Georgia e sono davvero tutti molto attenti al seguire le linee guida, alla professionalità indicata da AV e eh, alla lealtà. Questa è una cosa fondamentale, la lealtà eh, che c'è e che prima non c'era. Eh, ha davvero cambiato il panorama dell'attivismo da noi. So this uh, split that happened more than three years ago uh, had been linked to a betrayal at the time, but then we recovered from it and the quality is effectively much higher now because uh, the uh, organizers that we have now are really committed to the AV values. Uh, the level of professionality has risen a lot. And uh, a very important point is the loyalty towards mm. the organization and towards mm. uh, the guidelines of AV. So uh, now we are sure that everybody in uh, Italy is on the same page that they follow the AV guidelines at a very professional level. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about those guidelines. And then I'd like to talk more about managing people because this information in this video is not just relevant to regional organizers watching this back. While it is largely relevant to you, because Sylvia mainly operates as a regional organizer, this is also relevant to our organizers because you guys also manage people, you manage your volunteers. And the purpose of being an organizer is to build a community of people. And I, I don't know how, I don't 100% feel, no, it is a community. I, sometimes I feel a bit funny about the word community because there's a false sense of community in the animal rights movement, I'd say. In, in the animal rights movement at large, I would say. I would say it's a bit fabricated the way that it's, you know, like it's a bit of a fable is what I'm trying to say, right? However, as it, when it comes to like a local activism chapter, you are building a team based on common unity. That's what the word community means anyway. So that it, whatever, it does mean you are building a community. So you're a community leader. You are building a team of human beings for the common purpose of fighting for animal rights in an effective manner and coming together based on that purpose and that principle. And your purpose is to build a chapter, 
to not just, you know, build it based on numbers. Of course, having more people is good, but building in terms of training and building character and mindset, because this is the main thing I've seen with organizers needing help with is mindset, being able to understand that, yes, you are, for example, you are going to deal with people who are going to be detractors. They're going to try to come against you. They're going to try to say that you are a homophobe, that you are a racist, you are a sexist, you are a whatever, you know, in order to take you away from animal rights. And so you have to be someone who has the right mindset and the right attitude and say, I've heard this and I've seen this before. I don't need to get sucked into your your nonsense. I'm just going to stay focused on what I'm doing. Thank you very much. You know, you need to be able to, to detract the, the detractors. You need to be able to protect yourself mentally and emotionally from these people who want to be toxic in our movement. And there's so many of these people. This is why I say there's like a fabled sense of community in the animal rights movement at large. I'm dropping some real truth for everybody right now. If you're a new vegan listening to this, you will thank me one day for the knowledge that I am giving you right now. Even if you are a seasoned vegan, I'm telling you stuff to remind you. Right? If you if you know this already, I'm reminding you. I'm drop. I'm still dropping some real truth for you to be reminded by, and to get you on the right page. If you've been slipping, and I know that it's easy to slip because there's a lot of things that you will hear and feel. When you know when you are paying attention to what's being said and done in the animal rights movement at large, our work has always been trying to focus on truth. That's why it's the only word we use at the cube, right? We don't have any other word. It's a lot deeper than you guys may think. When when it comes to that, there's a reason why we only use that one word. It doesn't have the word vegan in it. It doesn't have the word animals or animal rights in it. The word truth. Why is truth? the word that we chose because that's what we're driven by that's what our, that's what we're guided by and that means across the board when it comes to outreach we're driven by truth what really works tried and true tested you know forms of of communication work that's why we focus on the principles not scripts we don't want to sound like robots this is a thing that people are confused by even organizers don't have the right mindset about outreach when it comes to our outreach approach and what it really means we're not asking you to follow a script we're asking you to understand the principles and follow the steps and the steps are based on principles if you look at each step each question that is in the outreach approach it's based on a principle and you have to represent those principles otherwise you're not doing it effectively and we can say that with confidence because we've been doing this for a long time now AV has done over 20,000 cubes of truth around the world now. And I'm being conservative. That's a conservative number, okay? It's probably double or more than that. But based on what we can report, on what we have recorded, 20,000 at least. In Italy, there's been a great deal of... I don't know what the number is, but you can imagine. You can imagine how much work is being done there. And we have our 10th, the, the 10th national cube coming up, which Asal and I will be at after one damn week. It's a very exciting time within this organization right now. One damn week is going ahead. 10th national cube in Italy is going ahead. And they deserve it. They deserve it. They have been doing this amazing work in Italy for a long time now. They deserve us to be there and to do a big cube and to you know not just do a workshop online anymore to be there personally and to operate a workshop and cubes there in the flesh and um and i'm sure we're going to get a lot out of that so let's get back to what we were saying mindset um you know what are our guidelines and why do we have guidelines some people say we're strict and like flores says the word is professional. And, you know, we have to get serious about what we're doing here if we want to be taken seriously. We've been saying that since day one. I have been saying that since we started in Melbourne. The more serious we take it, the more people will take us seriously. 
It's not rocket science. It's not brain surgery. It's actually very straightforward. Of course, that's sound logic. So why aren't we taking it more seriously then? You know? And so it starts from how seriously you take things as an organizer. You know, that's a lot of what you need training on. A lot of, a lot of your organizers is just simply taking the work that you're doing more seriously. And what are the guidelines that we have? So you start always with launching your events, getting your events promoted properly within the volunteer group, managing a volunteer group in a professional, in a professional way so that, you know, your potential volunteers are seeing activity in the group. You're sharing quality content that represents the values of this organization, the stuff that helps with mindset, such as the outreach workshop that I have, such as outreach videos that you could share from the AV Facebook page is the best place to share stuff because that's on the Facebook platform, stays on the platform. And then you can be sharing things that, you know, help to build community. You could be sharing posts about fundraising, about organizing where the social gathering will be after the cube, things of this nature. So it starts with how you manage your volunteer group. Then when you get out there on, and you, you do the cube, it is all about your, your briefing to begin with. So your briefing has to be a solid five to 10 minutes. You have to cover the important stuff. You have to start by, by setting the tone for everybody about what this is going to be about. You need to give them clear instructions. Even if they've heard them before, it's important to remind them about how important these things are. I, we do this when, when we are managing cubes ourselves, when we're organizing cubes, myself and Asal, we will do this even if we have seasoned vets who have been there for years. There's always at least one new volunteer. And so we do it as a team. And, you know, it's important to reset everyone because it's been a week or two since they've done a cube. A lot of these regular volunteers haven't done a cube maybe in three weeks, right? but they, they come regularly. They're at least there once a month or something like that. They still need a briefing. Even if they're coming at every cube, they still need a good briefing to reset and to set the tone for everybody. And so what do you cover during the briefing? You can check the briefing document and, and go through those things. I'm not gonna go through those points with you on this video. And the debriefing is also just as important. So it starts with how you do a briefing and how good you do those briefings. Take that seriously, you know, Make it, make it interesting. The way you speak has to be the opposite of boring because people are going to fall asleep if you're doing a briefing and you're putting like the most minimal amount of effort into speaking. So if you're just going, hi everybody. So we're gonna be doing a cube of truth today and I need everybody to be standing really straight in the cube. I would fall asleep. So. Just be mindful of how serious, again, it just comes down to how serious you take it. And having your equipment, you can start, if you're a new organizer, we're talking about just starting with what you can start with. You don't need to have TVs immediately. And so making sure you can logistically travel to the location, the best location that you can select within your city to do a Cuba Truth. And you, the way you set everything up has to be done professionally. People shouldn't be wearing bags. I'm not, again, I'm not going to cover like what's in the briefing document and what our guidelines are to a T. You guys can see that information in the resources in the AV organizers group. But I'm just covering like all these things. Uh, I could sit here and talk about all the one percents, all the things that are details, but they're all important. Is my point? And I keep saying this because it is as simple as this. Every 1% makes 100%. And do we want to be 99% effective or do we want to be 100% effective? And, you know, if I'm being honest, a lot of organizers aren't even 75% effective. And I'm not saying this because like I'm trying to be a dick. I'm just being honest. I'm being honest about how dedicated people are across the board to representing all of the guidelines the values behind the guidelines and do, and following the guidelines a lot of you are slipping and 
you know, to a degree, it's understandable. You guys didn't create this model. You don't, maybe you don't believe in it as much as we do. Maybe you don't trust it. Maybe you don't care about it as much as we do. But nonetheless, your success on the streets will be determined by how serious you take the work you do, regardless of which organization you work with or if you do your own thing. So I'm just calling it how I see it. I need to be honest with you as a leader within this org, just like I want you to be honest with me. But it, it, I think I'm just pointing out here that, you know, a lot of you aren't even really trying to push it up into the 90s and the 95% plus mark on this. So what I'm talking about is getting to 100% because that's the aim that we should have. Even if we miss by a few percent, which we always do anyway, because we're not perfect. The war is going to make mistakes, but shooting, aiming for 100% should be how we think. That should be our mindset, our attitude. If it's not that, we're not striving to be better at each cube and we ought to be striving and moving forward always, not just going out there and doing a subpar lackluster cube each time. What's the point of that? Aren't we dedicated to the animal rights movement in a significant way? Don't we want to push the movement forward? That's the whole point of the cube of truth. Have you noticed that AV doesn't do any other form of activism? We only do a cube of truth. And why is that? Because there's so much to learn and do with just a cube of truth. There's so many levels that we can take this to with just a cube of truth. There's so much that we can do with a cube of truth. So that's why. Look at all these campaigns we've created around the cube of truth. Look at all the different creative ideas that we've been able to implement. And look at the evolution of the cube of truth. You know, it's just, it's evident that we're always going to be able to get a lot out of this work and contribute a lot to the animal rights movement by doing this work. So, you know, I just want everybody to really reset here and understand that this work is just so important and all the details that go into it are so important. And I'm getting into this specifically because this is what Sylvia has been able to do in Italy is bringing everybody to an understanding of how important these things are exactly and getting to a point where everybody has a common understanding about this it's not even a debate anymore there aren't people fighting with each other anymore saying no it's not effective yes it is everyone's already on the same page and now people are talking about how to make it more effective you know the only feedback i usually hear from sylvia these days and and by the way, it's actually breathtaking how little complaints come from Italy. Now that, now that we have such quality in, in Italy, there's almost no complaints coming in. I don't even remember the last time there was any drama in Italy. I can't even remember the last time there was any issues in Italy. And so what I'm trying to say is if we do hear any feedback, it's usually about how, how can we be more effective? Oh, uh, you know, something about the music. Oh, it's something about um, setting up a social media account for a chapter within Italy. Or it's something about, you know, uh, the merchandise, how we can do the merchandise better. It's just people are trying to make the organization and what we stand for even better. That's the conversation. It's not, oh, why aren't we more intersectional? Which is usually at the core of most of the issues and the dramas we face, to be honest. So this is a fantastic job that, that I'm doing most of the talking here so that everybody can really digest this um, because I know that the translation, it slows d things down a little bit. It can, things can get lost in translation, as they say. And I really, the, the, the purpose of this video is I really need you guys to feel what we're talking about here and the importance of all these things. When I was in Taiwan, the organizers there took a lot of information in from me. And I was really moved by how well they took everything on. And we were just talking about the little things. Hey, these cubas, they need to stand back just a little bit. Let's shorten that distance between each, the, the, the distance between cubas, we could just shorten it just a little bit, right? I was focus, focusing on shortening it even just a little bit if we could, as long as we could, we should. And then the TVs, the way the TVs were being held, 
the positioning of the hands on the TVs, which should be on the bottom, by the way, not on the sides, not on the top, okay, on the bottom, and in it, and and they shouldn't be holding the TV in a way that covers the screen, just sort of holding the TV up, but not, and the other thing is not holding the TV, the weight of the TV should be on the straps, because ideally you would have straps, right? So the weight of the TV needs to be on the straps. That means the way that the straps are tightened needs to be managed properly. Like it needs to be tight enough. Uh, it can't be too tight. So it's strangling them and, and you know, and, and uh, impeding on their breathing. But it also needs to be, it can't be loose because if it's too loose, it's hanging, right? And then that means more of the weight of the TV will be on the, on the cuba's hands, right? And you also need to have it so it so if someone is more overweight and the tv is being pushed outward at the bottom you need to be able to make it so that the tv is actually straight so you need to have the person holding the tv a little bit more with their hands but then adjusting the strap accordingly to that body type so the tv is always straight like this and i, I don't just mean when you're looking at it i don't just mean like a painting on the wall I mean, it's facing straight as well. So it's not just ideal for tall people or short people when it's pointed that way or pointed that way. It's straight. So it's ideal for everybody of every height, you see? And so these small things I was pointing out for every single cuba, the way that they're standing. So if their feet are like this, but one foot is a little bit further in front of the other, ask the cuba's foot to come back a little bit and I would guide them. I also directed the organizers, and this is something I want to teach you guys right now, the driving wheel technique, where you're trying to guide the cuba to adjust the positioning of the TV. So let's say it's on an angle a little bit to the left. You need them to bring it back to the right. So you do this. Instead of going up to the cuba and touching the TV and telling them to move it, you're standing in front of them, not too close, obviously, just so that they can see you. And you just put your hands out like this. And then whichever way you need them to push the TV, you guide them just like this. And you move your hands slowly because if you move your hands quickly, they're going to go like this. Like they're going to move too fast and it's going to be hard. Oh no, go back. Oh no, go back. So you have to just move slowly like this, like this until they get it right. Sometimes they'll go too high and then you go, oh, bring it back a little bit. Oh, bring it back a little bit. Yep, perfect. And then you give them the two thumbs up or the, you know, and that's it. That's how you guide them. The best way, the reason why that's the best way also is because then they mentally know where everything should sit when they're the ones that have adjusted it themselves, you see? So we're trying to embed some more engagement into the cubers. So if they're more engaged in their work, they're getting more out of it and they're also able to do their job better right? So these, these are the small things that I was really happy about being able to teach the organizers in Taiwan. And these, again, I have to credit these organizers because they're just so fantastic. These human beings were so fantastic to work with because they just absorbed the knowledge, like they were so ready for it. And, you know, that's why I say it's only going to work if you take this work seriously. This is why Sylvia has been successful. This is why Andrea is successful. This is why we are successful. It's because we take this very seriously. And the briefing, a lot of a lot of the activists in Taiwan were messaging me and commenting and saying that that briefing that I gave them at the very beginning is what set the tone. They said it got everybody's attitudes in the right place. Everybody was ready. Everybody understood exactly what the mission was. And were there some people at the briefing that you could visibly tell we're not paying full attention? Yes, of course, there's always gonna be those people. They think that they're too important or they just don't need to hear it or they're on their phones or whatever, but there are still people there that are paying full attention. And even those people who aren't fully paying attention, they still need to hear this. They still need to hear the tone that's being set. They still need to hear this even if they're not fully listening. So. It is important that you do proper briefings. If you need help with your briefings, contact me through your support chat. Let me know. I'll take a phone call with you. 
But read the briefing document. If you haven't read it recently, read it again. It starts with a good briefing. And throughout the entire cube, monitoring everything if you're an organizer is the key. Don't get lost in outreach conversations. Don't, don't have outreach conversations unless all of the organizer responsibilities are being managed correctly. Let me ask you this. What are some of the challenges you've found with managing organizers? Could you tell me that, Silvia? Allora, ehm, io sono disponibile con eh, gli organizzatori 24 ore su 24 praticamente. Eh, certo, mi prendo i miei tempi, se, se non posso rispondere dico che lo farò quanto prima, dico a tutti prima di insistere perché magari mi può sfuggire qualche messaggio, ma sono disponibile con loro eh, sempre, ogni giorno. E, mh, ci vediamo una volta al mese. Eh, per una riunione eh, in cui appunto ci saranno dei temi portati da me in cui riferirò a tutti quanti eh, qualche novità o qualche consiglio, qualche indicazione e poi eh, la riunione prosegue con la libertà per tutti quanti di parlare quindi mh, qualsiasi cosa viene discussa tra tutti oltre a questo io eh, sono in tutte le chat degli, degli organizzatori eh, ne abbiamo solo per organizzatori ma anche di ogni specifico capitolo quindi se c'è una problematica in un capitolo gli organizzatori scrivono in quella chat e io eh, li supporto in quello che c'è da fare quello che è molto importante è l'esempio secondo me e la presenza esattamente come Pole Asal fanno con noi eh, regional organizer e, mh, se sei onesto, eh, l'esempio può essere preso e quindi eh, a, a cascata no? va dal regional organizer agli organizzatori poi e a tutti quanti gli attivisti. Grazie. So the first thing is uh, Silvia is available 24 hours a day. She's always available. Mm -hmm. She is not able to answer very, very quickly, but she asks people to be a bit patient, maybe. Uh, but she is very open to listen to the people uh, and to find the, 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 the core of the problem, if there is a problem, and uh, uh, to be as serious as possible, because if we are honest, and we take the job seriously we 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 are more professional and more effective so and the example will also taken from the organizers towards the activists the same example so the very important thing is to be very available and very open to listen to the people and uh, we have um, a meeting with all the organizers once a month. It's on Zoom, we record it because of course we are more than 100 organizers. Not everybody can be uh, the last uh, Tuesday of the month on, on uh, online, but we record it so that other organized, or, uh, organizers can watch the meeting afterwards. And each meeting is uh, has two parts. One part is uh, some communications and the important stuff to discuss uh, for all the organizers. And the second part is a uh, bit more, more free that uh, every organizer can bring its own topics or concerns. Or so, And um, we have a lot of chats. Every chapter has uh, one or two chats, typically they have uh, one chat for AV staff, so official uh, chat, and the second for spam for other topics related to the animal rights, but not to AV. And Silvia is on every chat so that she can pick up everything that may be re relevant for her. And uh, we have also chats uh, about uh, different topics sometimes, uh, graphic uh, design, 
for for the organization of the national cube and so and uh, we work a lot uh, with these chats yeah and then there's also the av italia um it's uh, instagram and facebook page that are managed by Sylvia largely manages this team and then there's a team there's a team of of activists that are either organizers or volunteers from my understanding but they're trusted activists that Sylvia manages um so th these are the responsibilities and these are the ways that Sylvia has gone about managing the organizers within her management within her region um you know one big thing there was um you know, all of these things are really just building community, aren't they? Because these things, there is a tight knit community vibe within Italy, isn't there? Right. And you know, these these are the things that make up this tight knit community: monthly hangouts. You know, having these group chats, even a non AV like it's an animal rights general chat that everybody within the AV organizer team within Italy is in this chat. You know, there's social gatherings that are organized with these people. This is a team, like this is a team based on the, the right principles. And, um, you know, and my question, however, which I think shows that there aren't really, there isn't, again, like I said before, there isn't much drama in Italy because of the quality of activists that have been recruited and cultivated. <laughs> and, uh, my question was what kind of challenges has Sylvia ran into with these organizers? And, you know, can I ask that question one more time, just to make sure, you know, is there any, like, have there been any real issues that you'd like to discuss right now with everybody? And how did you manage that? How did you manage those issues? Quindi, quali sono state le sfide più importanti che ho dovuto affrontare per poter raggiungere questo livello di qualità di avere così tanti organizzatori quindi di conseguenza anche attivisti di un livello così alto che crea una vera comunità di intenti yeah and before before you answer Silvia I just want to say because Silvia did you know mention about how you know once there is a problem the way that Silvia manages it is by taking a call with the activists and getting to the root of the problem and you know and being being very matter of fact and honest and serious about how we deal with these things and just getting to the core of it and i'd like to speak on that a little bit more but now i'll let sylvia answer that question if there's anything specific mi vuoi aggiungere andrea e poi così rispondo ho solo specificato quello che ha notato in te che appunto prendi molto seriamente le questioni le tratti con onestà quindi quali sono le sfide che hai dovuto affrontare sì. e come le hai affrontate sì è importante eh, capire questo che di sfide ce ne sono state non è stata una cosa semplice e quindi anche gli altri ro si possono trovare nelle stesse difficoltà e magari ehm, può essere utile sapere come eh, come è stato fatto in italia Um, la sfida eh, più, um, più dura è stata quella eh, più importante, cioè la difesa dell'organizzazione. La difesa dell'organizzazione, perché quando sono oh, entrata nel ruolo, eh, praticamente era diventata una moda, eh, eri nel giusto se andavi contro AV, perché AV era e tutte le cose che venivano dette sessista, omofoba, razzista, non intersezionale, quindi tutte cose gravissime. Eh, la cosa ehm, tosta da affrontare, inizialmente ancora più tosta perché eravamo davvero pochi a, eh, a credere in AV allora, era la comunicazione con tutti quanti sul fatto che eh, a V non meritasse affatto certe critiche e che non essere intersezionalista non significa essere un oppressore, significa dedicarsi completamente agli animali, ma ciò non toglie e le char policy lo testimonia benissimo che a V è molto attenta ai rapporti interpersonali e al fatto di dare ai propri attivisti una zona 
estremamente confortevole e protetta. E quindi il far comprendere questo con l'esempio, eh, con le dimostrazioni, è stata la sfida ehm, più difficile, ma ehm, è fattibile, questo voglio dire a chi si trova in, questi, in queste problematiche tutt'oggi. È assolutamente fattibile mettendo la propria faccia, la propria onestà, il proprio esempio e le proprie rassicurazioni ed esserci sempre a, a spiegare questo a chi ne ha bisogno. Non dico che tutti quanti accolgono questo, ma è una minoranza quella che non accoglie questo discorso e restano soltanto gli, gli odiatori seriali che eh, non sono ovviamente da prendere in considerazione come bacino di utenza. So we have been facing uh, several challenges uh, at the beginning. Uh, the hardest one has been the defense of the organization of AV and AV values. Because of these attacks about being uh, homophobic and sexist, which are completely absurd, uh, we also uh, had to make people understand that the fact that we are not intersectional doesn't mean that we don't care about other things. It means that we are focused on animals, but at the same time we, we are able to uh, create a safe zone for the organizers and for the activists, and we are there just for, for the animals. Um, so, at the beginning, it has been very difficult to make people understand what are our, our values and why we focused only on animals. But mm -hmm. the very best organizers, the ones, that, maybe not the very best, but the ones that are good for us, for our organizations, and from our point of view for the animals, are the ones that understand this thing. So it has been like a natural selection. The ones that are, care more about other stuff, they've gone. And it's mm. good that they have gone. Mm. So uh, we, are, we were only a few people at the beginning of this uh, very challenging uh, moment of AV in Italy. But then we were able to, to build up on this. And uh, with a lot of passions, we have been able to uh, um, explain to people why we didn't deserve, deserve all this criticism. Mm -hmm. And so the people could understand, and uh, they also, being able to listen to them, because at the beginning a lot of them were not sure, we took a lot of time to let them express also with personal meetings one to one and to explain everything and give them the possibility to listen to them and to explain many things has been very important so we could really uh, create a safe space for them and also in this way we could show that we are very um, care about a lot about the personal relationships to build this <coughs> sense of real community and not safe fake community as you say before a real community that people that really care about animals and uh, all this is doable it takes uh, really a lot of passion and honesty and we have to be the example for the others mm -hmm. and we have to be able to reassure rea reassure the people the reassurance that we care about them and about their issues. And the majority could understand this. Of course, there are always some uh, serial haters, but we have been able to, to let these people go outside from our organization. And so now we have peace. Yeah. Wow, fantastic, fantastic response to that. Um, Wow, this has reminded me about a lot that has happened since that exodus. 
Um, and so there's a couple things I want to touch on. First thing I want to touch on the fact that a lot of you organizers are watching this have dealt with some level of drama as an organizer. Maybe some volunteers start becoming detractors and they start talking smack about you. If you become an organizer for this organization, if you start representing this organization, you are a racist, right? Maybe they start throwing you under the bus based on what they heard online in a stupid video or something, right? You have to, so imagine that level of drama compared to what Sylvia took on. Can, can you imagine coming into a chapter in a city, you're now the new organizer who's stepping up to become an organizer for a chapter. And in that city, there's a bunch of AV haters. Maybe there's a few, but they're loud, right? They're the louder ones. And they give you shit for becoming an organizer for this organization. They start giving you drama to deal with. Imagine the weight of that, of, of defending the, the weight of defending our organization in the face of that compared to what Sylvia had to deal with. Sylvia took on her role with an avalanche already coming at her with all these people complaining. She had to defend the organization in the face of all of that, right? So there's a lot that you can take from this. This role of being an organizer or a regional organizer, more importantly, if you're a regional organizer, but if you're an organizer, this is just as relevant when you, when you consider the fact that, again, you're managing people. It is required of you to be able to say, I don't care what people think of me. I don't care if people try to call me a racist for simply representing an organization that is focused 100% on the animals. You know, I just want to point out also that taking this position of defending such things should not be so radical. Why is that such a radical thing to expect of our organizers? If this was any other organization fighting for human rights, these same people who give us shit for being dedicated solely to animal rights, you never see them giving shit to these human rights organizations who just focus on one thing. You'll never see them trying to tear them down and saying, no, you should also focus on gay rights or whatever they think is the most important thing or whatever they want to focus on. Why is that? Because it would be incredibly insensitive and distasteful for them to do that, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be? But this just shows how oppressed the animals are. They can't even get a, they can't even get a movement. They can't even get a movement dedicated to them, like fully dedicated to them. That's how oppressed they are. You know, and this is why I'm more than happy to dedicate my life to their plight because they're the most oppressed. And it's just, it just keeps proving itself to me, you know, and like there's so much evidence in the way that vegans act to, to, to point out, to indicate just how oppressed these animals are. So we need to cultivate a team, whether you're an organizer or a regional organizer, your job is to cultivate a culture, a team of people that understand exactly what I'm talking about right now, right? The our core value at the end of the day is representing what? The voiceless, the animals, representing the most oppressed, understanding that they are the most oppressed, understanding that the animal rights movement currently does not act the way that it ought to, for the most part, if you're paying attention. Uh, is there good work being done? Of course there is, and I'm a, I'm a big supporter of it. But is there enough being done? No, that's why we need more people to understand what I'm talking about, to understand the values that we bring to the table. Why are we still the most relevant street activism organization in the animal rights movement? Why, why are there so many off-brand Cube of Truth events happening, so many people copying what we do? And trying to do it in their own way and we tip our hat to them there's no i don't have i don't i'm not here to say that that's wrong necessarily we've actually encouraged it since day one if you're paying attention if you read the cuba truth manual it says we wish you well if you want to do that go ahead and copy everything but out of respect just call it something else don't call it a cuba truth call it a safe square whatever you know someone else has called it that's what they that's what people should do 
My point, however, is that this organization deserves to be fought for. The values of this organization, the way you need to see it as an organizer or a regional organizer, is that you are embodying the defense of this of the values that this organization represents. You need to say, I am willing to fight for these values. And you actually need to be willing to go out there and fight for these values. In the face of people saying, no, you must focus on humans. You must focus on humans. Keep Stop focusing on animals. Focus on humans. And you need to be able to say, no, I will focus on humans during another time, doing another another action during another scheduled action for whatever cause that is i'm here to do a cube of truth which is only like once a week guys get a grip we're only doing this for three or four hours a week that's if you're a very that's if you're a frequently active chapter by the way you know i'm 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 only talking about like a frequently active chapter being active only for three or four hours a week can we get a grip guys can we just be on the same page about the fact that those three or four hours that the animals deserve that at least to just be fully dedicated to them can we can we start to cultivate a team of people that share that value and of course just because we're not an intersectional organization it's absurd that we even have to explain that this doesn't mean that we are for human oppression of any way in any way shape or form of course we're we're humans ourselves of many different walks of life within this organization of many different backgrounds of, of course we're for human rights it's an absurd thing to, to to even say like it's it's just as absurd as non-vegans saying to vegans do you also care about humans as much as you care about animals just because we're fighting for animal rights doesn't mean we necessarily are oppressing or for oppressing humans it's ridiculous again this would never happen if it was a human rights issue if this was if this was based on human rights activists fighting for whatever cause they believe uh, or, or i should say they're invested in dedicated to ending whatever they're fighting against these same people that that offer this criticism that 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 will try to cancel you these same people will never do it to those groups they'll never go up to those groups and say hey you should be focusing more on this instead of that they'll they'll respect the fact that they're dedicated 100 percent to whatever that cause is why don't the animals get the same level of respect from vegans people who call themselves vegan it's absurd we haven't we have too many cases throughout the history of AV where we have taken on issues that have happened between human beings in the organization and addressed it accordingly. If there was bullying of some kind, if someone was being attacked, if someone was being, you know, someone was working against someone so that they couldn't do the work anymore, we just address, we always address it. We just address an issue. We always address issues throughout the year. Asal and I manage the HR cases by ourselves. So we are always sticking up for activists who are loyal to this organization. We are always supporting activists who are loyal. We are always here for you guys. We will always support you in this work. That's the point of this being an organization is we're here together as an organized group. That's the benefit of being part of an organization, right? We're here together, right? So you can rely on us and you can lean on us to help you through your challenges, whether they're small or large. If no matter how great the detail is, it's likely we've been down that road before. We can give you our experience and give you our guidance. And if it's something new, we can tackle it together. For example, what's happening in Italy right now is uh, at least in one city is uh, the authorities or the specifically police officers that are probably breaking the law are trying to say that we can't use um, certain kinds of footage, like the, the footage is too graphic. We've seen this happen in different parts of the world before. But what we're doing here in, in Italy, because when Sylvia brought this to my attention, I said, let's fight this, right? And Sylvia is now taking this on. Again, I tip my hat off to a Sil this is uh, this. I'm, I, there's a reason I'm doing a video with these two people. I have so much respect for both of you. Right now, Sylvia has found a lawyer 
and we're going to be fighting this. We're going to take this all the way to court. And if we need to raise money, we'll do a fundraiser amongst a rich community now. I don't mean rich in, the t in, in terms of money. I mean in terms of quality. We now have a fantastic community of activists in Italy who will, of course, support this fundraiser should we need funds. And maybe even the network at large would want to support such a thing because this would be the first time that we actually take something like this to court. And I always assume that one day it might happen. We are going to get stopped perhaps one day by authorities. There are some countries, of course, we wouldn't even want to fight it, like in China, in Hong Kong, for example. We don't want to take things to the court and try to fight it there. There's just no point, I don't think. Unless someone can educate me on the political system there and, and, the, edu and the, the legal system there beyond what I know about it already. But in Italy, for example, we have a chance. We have a fighting chance, right? Because there is a court that we can get favor from. And we are fighting for basic human rights here. Again, an animal rights organization is currently fighting for human rights. That's what we're currently doing in Italy, right? Why, aren't, why isn't this talked about when we are looked at as such, you know, oh, these guys are so anti-human rights. Really? We're actually in the position right now where we are fighting for human rights in Italy. And it's just a basic fundamental human right, the freedom of speech, essentially, the, the freedom to peacefully protest. If that isn't one of the most basic fundamental human rights, I don't know what is. And we are currently fighting for that not just for our organization, but for the sake of all activists speaking up against any injustice where the injustice is graphic. We are currently sticking up for our right to speak about that in a direct, honest, and truthful way. How's that for human rights activism? And Sylvia is taking this on, right? We are currently doing this to fight against, again, to also fight for the values of this organization. You have to be willing to do that. You have to be truly aligned with the values of this organization. You know, I, I think we're at the stage now where we can say enough is enough. If you don't align with this organization, the time's up. Make your decision. Save everybody time. Stop trying to take advantage and use the organization for your benefit. Just be honest and say, I don't align with this organization. I want to do my own thing. And you know what? I will always support you. If you reach out respectfully to me and ask me for advice on what you should do as an activist in other things, like, you you know, by the way, I do this all the time. There are many people that have left AV on respectful terms and are now doing their own thing. They started their own organization or whatever, and we still maintain contact because we respect each other. And they ask me for advice on things. And I always have these types of messages that I'm, that I'm responding to. So... You know, if you think I'm some type of like either, you know, you either do AV or fuck you, I'm not like that. So my point is, respect what we're doing, be actually be aligned with what we're doing here and show us the respect that we deserve. And we will show you the same amount of respect back if you do that. You're either a part of this AV thing that we're doing or you're not. Make your mind up. Please decide and don't waste our time. We take up a lot of responsibility. Each of us take on more than one role. A lot of us, myself, I'm, I, my hands are uh, in several things within AV. Same with Sylvia, same with Andrea, same with many of the people that work within AV. We are currently taking on a lot. Please respect all of our time and our effort to make this organization work. What I'm telling you right now is the mindset that Sylvia brings to the table when she is talking to her fellow organizers. This is what it's all about. You know, we can talk about the really small things. I want to focus more on the mindset, but the small things are like what I said earlier about doing the best briefing you can, the best debriefing that you can, making sure your cube is all standing right, making sure they all respect the bag protocol. If they bring in their bags, they pack light and they wear them. There is no storage space. Making sure that when you speak during your briefing, you're speaking with oomph in your voice. Like you actually want to be there. Like you're dedicated to what you're doing. Like you take this seriously. Being organized, orchestrating your cube of truth in a professional way. Keeping an eye on everything. When people raise their hands, you shouldn't be paying attention somewhere else. 
You should be seeing that. You should go over there immediately and ask them what's up. Find out what they need and give them what they need in a timely manner. Maybe they need to switch. Whatever it is, do it in a timely manner. Take all of the little things seriously and I promise you, you will be more effective, therefore more fulfilled in your effort to make a change for animals. The, the most common symptom of an animal rights activist is hopelessness of any activist. And the way to avoid that, the way to dispel frustration, to, to remedy frustration and anger, if you're paying attention, you ought to be feeling angry at what's going on. The way to overcome that is through effective activism. It's the only thing that has given me fulfillment and has helped me to feel like, okay, I'm making some progression. I am creating change. And there's so much potential for me to get better at this, to make even more change. And you all need to adopt this mindset if you don't already. And if you do, and you need a bit of a reset, I hope that this video has served you well. The other thing that I wanted to talk about, which I just remembered from earlier, I said there were two things. The other thing is what Sylvia does. This is a cheat code for all you to pay attention to. What Sylvia does when a new organizer comes onto the team, because she handles the induction call, this is how thorough she is. First of all, before they even go through the induction process, Sylvia takes a call with them. She organizes a one-on-one -on -one call with them. Then she says, here's what the organization is all about. Are you sure you want to join? Right? And then they either say yes or no, because now they're really sure about what the organization is about. And then through the induction process, what Sylvia does also is she explains the background for AV in Italy, the history, what happened during this exodus, the lies that are being spread, the truth, the truth, the truth. So they can decide where they stand, which side of this do they stand? And they know what they're signing up for. They're also being, you know, a lot of this mindset stuff that I'm talking to you about is being instilled in them by Sylvia. She's then saying, you may have to deal with some of these lies. They may be directed at you. You may, be, you may have to deal with some drama. Just that drama may be directed at you and may be designed to try and stop you from doing your work. Are you willing to deal with that? Are you willing to stand up and to stand your ground? And This just happened in Melbourne, by the way. AV Melbourne had a break for six months, the only hiatus outside of the pandemic that AV Melbourne has ever taken. Usually there has always been an organizer and usually it's a weekly cube of truth in this location on Burke Street Mall. Most, most consistent chapter in the world, perhaps, right? Just re-engage with a new organizer. I handled the induction process. I'm the regional organizer for Australia. So I'm managing this from a, from a distance, but I'm managing it as close as possible. And one of the activists from one of the volunteers that used to volunteer with us uh, was then causing some problems for us trying to work against us in some way. And I addressed it by, I addressed it by talking to the activists directly by reaching out to them and they agreed to a phone call, which I'm glad that they agreed to. And we talked it out over the phone. And then the new organizer, I also did this with, I inducted them, giving them full knowledge of what the landscape was in, in Melbourne and how I was going to help as their regional organizer to address this with them and then this organizer was i had to then say are you willing to stand up for the organization and, and stand your ground should they show up to the cube and try to do this that and the third right if they try to work against you in some type of way are you willing to do i gave him some specific advice on what to do i won't get into that right now because it doesn't matter my point is is i gave him guidance on exactly how to manage the situation because I've been there. We have been there many times, whether it's in Melbourne or other cities, I know how this goes. Now the organizer is impassioned, has a much better mindset about what's going on and actually just messaged me after their, their cube yesterday, messaged us in their support chat and said, cube went well, a bigger turnout than the one before. The, the volunteer attendance is building. They're getting a good, sense of what's happening they're starting to 
and they hit the ground running. This organizer hit the ground running. And if you're watching this back, Jesse, you're the man, you know, I'm proud of what's going on there. Um, so far, so good. You know, we're off to a good start with getting that chapter back up and running. But this is what it's all about. It's about mindset. It's about understanding that, you know, what are you even sticking up for if you represent us? You're sticking up for the basic value of, like I said, just simply being 100% dedicated to animal rights. Is that so radical of a position to take? And, you know, beyond that, we have some basic principles around respect and stuff that we expect you know, like in the way we communicate to each other or the way that other activists should treat us. You know, like, for example, in Melbourne, the issue was sort of around not respecting the fact uh, that we have been doing the work that we've been doing there for as long as we've been doing it and overtly disrespecting. So that's why I had to address it and that's why we addressed it and it, it was addressed in the best possible way. It worked out perfectly, exactly as I thought it would. And... I, I do think there has to be a level of respect here for us, for the organization, for, for the work that we're doing, you know, and for uh, one thing that blows my mind is some, so many people in the animal rights movement don't respect the OGs. But that's what I can't understand is people don't respect Gary Rofsky and his work, for example. You might have criticisms, but the fact that people don't respect it as much as they ought to just blows my mind. If you don't respect the OGs, I don't know what, like you're, I don't, I don't, I don't see how you're going to lead your life in a very fruitful way. Like if you don't respect those who have put in so much work as a foundation to where we are today, if Gary Roski didn't do his work, do you really think that Earthing Ed and Joey Carstrong and James Aspie and all these people would be around today? Are you fucking kidding me? Like, it's not even a question. They wouldn't be around today. I wouldn't be around today. Do you know how many activists have actually told me that the only reason they're around today is because of him? Initially, the, the words he spoke. It's just a fact. You can have your criticisms. That's fine. But it's a fact. The blueprint, the foundation was laid out by the OGs. Respect that. Respect the work that we have done up until this point and the work that we aim to do because we're trying to get better. Respect is important. Loyalty is important. You know, what are we even talking about? Basic human values. Like we're, ta we're talking about basic things here, common decency, you know. We expect that within this organization because we're human beings and we need that to thrive within our mission to achieve what we're trying to achieve for animal rights. So without making this video longer than what we need to make it, is there anything that you think that we haven't covered that we that you think that we should cover. Silvia, c'è qualcosa che pensi che non abbiamo coperto che vuoi ancora aggiungere in maniera molto breve? Mm, beh, vorrei vorrei puntare un attimo l'attenzione su questo, stavo pensando. Eh, l'importanza dell'avere intorno e, e questo si fa grazie a, ai colloqui di cui parlava prima Paul, mh, delle persone in gamba, delle persone oneste, delle persone che facciano squadra con te nel difendere i valori dell'organizzazione e che come te diano tanto senza avere un, un ritorno egoistico ma esclusivamente per i diritti degli animali pensare a questo insieme, avere questa cosa in comune insieme e fare un team di lavoro in ciascuna eh, nazione e quindi questo è magari un consiglio più che altro per gli RO se, se lo vogliono accogliere, se pensano che sia adeguato il circondarsi di persone in gamba, di persone con sani principi che siano leali a volte si sbaglia nel giudicare le persone, purtroppo ci rimaniamo male, però ci rialziamo e andiamo avanti e sono tante le persone che come te mh, credono in quello che fanno, in questi valori e insieme a te fanno squadra e difendono insieme a te l'organizzazione. E io ringrazio tutta quanta la mia squadra, tutta, 
in Italia e all'estero per essere delle persone eccezionali quali sono, li ringrazio di cuore e ovviamente senza di loro mh, non, non ci sarebbe nessun successo, no? E invece è, è proprio grazie a loro che le cose vanno così, cerco di fare del mio meglio, arrivo dove posso, eh, a volte un po' in ritardo, ma dedico tutto il mio tempo a, ad AV, mm, ovviamente a, a parte il discorso sopravvivenza, ma mm, davvero cerco di dedicarne il più possibile e tutto questo è più facile grazie alla squadra che si è creata e non mi metto a fare nomi perché rischierei di lasciare qualcuno e sono davvero tantissimi. Grazie mille. So, it is very important to be surrounded by smart and honest people who work together for the values that uh, we have as AV, focused on animals, and have people that are able to give much the energy without expecting something in return for themselves because this sometimes is a problem i am here for the animals or i use the animals for myself mm. it's very important to be here for the animals and not the you know, other way around sometimes we also make mistakes but uh, we, we improve we learn from the mistakes and we improve from them and we move on. Uh, Silvia has to thank uh, many people, all the team that we have in Italy, because without this team, she wouldn't be able to do the work as she does. And uh, she dedicates uh, most of the, her time to AV <clears throat> as much as possible. And uh, she thanked all the team without uh, making any names, but uh, she thanks a lot of everybody for being on the same page. And if I can add something from my side, I would say uh, quality is more important than quantity. So it doesn't matter. I We know that a big cube can be even more effective, but we don't have to be frustrated even if we are only two or three people, it's enough. It's, the quality is really more important than <clears throat> quantity. So I would argue I, that it's actually more effective to have a smaller cube with more effect, with quality people than it is to have a large cube with people who aren't acting professionally, who aren't even following the dress code probably, who are just outreaching in the most ridiculous ways, getting into long 25 minute conversations about everything other than putting that person in the victim's position uh you know basically getting into debates probably just just you know whatever they think is the way to outreach whatever they want to do as an activist um you know is that really effective if you have a bunch of people doing that stuff i don't think so i don't think so i think it's much better to have like three people who have the right mindset and the people that you do speak to being outreached properly. Yes, and uh, during the induction call, I also explain why we have a hierarchy within AV. It is not oppressive at all. It is because the cube has been developed and improved to be as effective as possible. And we want to keep this format as a effective as possible. So it's a matter of organization and coordination and also to be recognizable all over the world as the same. And if we have a strong organization, it's good to have also local organizations, but I think a strong organization worldwide can help the animals because we can be taken very seriously mm -hmm. as a strong organization that is spread out all over the world. Mm -hmm. The last thing that I want to add is to keep a positive mindset. Even if we have troubles or so, uh, what has happened in the world during the last three years would have divided us a lot. But 
being focused on animals, I told myself because I've been many times not, uh, um, I didn't agree with uh, other organizers uh, within Italy about these topics in the world. But I, I said to myself, does this help the animals if I fight now? No, it doesn't. So I keep my position for myself and I put the animals on first place and I leave the human issues behind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's beautiful, man. That's the thing, you know, like you, you said it earlier, we make mistakes. That's the thing. If you happen to stumble across an issue, a concern that you have with anyone within this organization, no matter which part of the organization we're talking about, then I can promise you, if you just bring it to us in a respectful way, we can, we can sort it out. We can discuss the issue and we can resolve it. We usually do when the communication is respectful and you come to us you know through the right channels you message us and that kind of thing instead of like slandering us publicly and you know disparaging the organization trying to detract people from supporting you know all this stuff that we've seen from immature people in the past if you just come to us respectfully based on your concern we'll address it because we're not perfect maybe it is a legitimate mistake but i can assure you that much most in fact Let's be honest, I don't know of a single thing that any of these videos online or anything that these people have said online, I don't know of any of the, this stuff to be even remotely true. A lot of it is based on, um, you know, people sitting around um, speculating based on hearsay and, you know, just really poor logic. And so again, but again, if you have a legitimate concern, something that's valid, bring it to our attention. Let us know. Work with us. You know what I mean? Work with us. And we will work through it. You know, I, I, I think that it's just very important, like Andre said, that we have a positive mindset here. We're doing our best. We may make mistakes. We may make mistakes along the way. But we are doing our best. And the best we know how to do this is to operate the way we're operating right now. The decision that we made initially was to do an effective format on the streets that works really well when it comes to street activism. We achieved that and it became a working model that we can continually improve. We're still working to improve it today in small ways, right? And then the decision came to make an organization and the organization is there to support those who do this format and to provide resources and training and to be organized as the word organization implies, right? To be organized as a group, right? And these decisions that we've made along the way have been met with a lot of people trying to work against us constantly trying to work against us and we have gone through so many negative situations up until this point it's amazing that i still feel fresh as ever right now but positive mindset is what helps i'm able to stay balanced in my life so i can be the best i can be for the animals you should do the same thing some of you actually work too hard perhaps i'm not saying I love your dedication. I'm not saying if it's working for you, keep going. I'm not saying give up or take, you know, huge breaks if you don't need a huge break, but have balance in your life. Keep your mind healthy. Keep your body healthy and reach out to us. Again, a part, a part of the decision to be an organization is to provide support. Reach out to us. You can lean into the support that we offer you through your regional organizer or directly to me and Asal. We will, we will support you if you are loyal to AV. If you support us, we will support you. Guaranteed. We always do. You can ask our regional organizers. You can ask those who have worked with us for a long time. So I think we've covered some really good things here. I don't think we should get into any more. I'm very excited 
to be in Italy soon for the 10th National Cube. This is another thing. 10 National Cubes. Can you tell everybody that's listening to this what the date of that will be in case they're interested in going after one damn week? Tell us the date and the city. So the 10th National Cube will be held uh, in Venice on September 30th, which will be so, uh, Saturday. Yes. Saturday, September 30th, at the end of September. That's what we're doing. For those of you who are still going to be in Europe after one damn week, or you uh, you can make it if you want to make it, if you can make it, I'm encouraging you to make it. Because it's going to be huge. You know, this is the 10th one. The ones previous to this were huge. So you can only imagine how big this is going to be. Again, it's not about the numbers, though, because we're talking about huge numbers, but these activists are some of the best activists in the world. So can you imagine how good this cube of truth is going to be? There's going to be a workshop for this as well. And um, if you can do it, come to Venice, September 30th. Um, for those of you who don't know, One Damn Week is going ahead. It's happening September 1st to September 10th in Amsterdam. September 10th is really when we're doing a social gathering. September 9th is the end of One Damn Week. And it's, I just can't wait. I can't wait to be there. Again, the activists in Italy deserve it. For those of you who are watching this back in Italy, I can't wait to be there and work with you guys. And we'll leave this video on that note. Thanks for watching, guys. Let us know in the comments if you have any questions. And we'll see you in the next Organizer Hangout. Salute.